Okay. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Uh... Crap. <laughs> I think she knows me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me and her eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry! I was just spacing out. I mutter this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. No shit, Sherlock. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book that you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. I feel like now that I'm not stuffed up, I'm just messing up the voice now. Nah. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? One's for her ex, obviously. Ah, uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday... Ah, uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, uh, I see. There's something fairly obviously here. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about anyway? Well... Mm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. Whoa, wait. <laughs> Tell me she's just bad at summaries, right? Because, like, if someone asks me what a book's about, I I go straight for the summary because I can't, I can't make up my own. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. Okay, hold on. Is this a real book? I'm gonna look it up real quick. Portrait of Markov. Uh. Okay, realism. Uh, no, I don't. I want to know about the book, not the game. It's it's bringing me to the game. And sites. Um. Book. Did I spell portrait wrong? I, I spelled portrait wrong. I spelled it pro trait. Um. Uh, wait. It's not a book, it's a picture. Portrait of I M Markov? Wait, is this not it? Coming up with a picture. But I'm also getting like a bunch of like Reddit threads and I really don't wanna accidentally look at something I'm not supposed to, because I know nothing about the game other than it turns <laughs> and that I'm going to die or something. Like now. Me personally am gonna I don't know none of my friends have told me that it's gonna fuck me up. Okay. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Okay, so this turned into a series of unfortunate events. Alright. I just wanted to make sure I don't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost younger sister. But as soon as she does so, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison. What the fuck? <laughs> It's kind of random, don't you think? And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships and her life starts to fall apart. What's with that face, huh? That's kind of... It's kind of dark, isn't it? <laughs> Yuri made it. 
sound like it was going to be a nice story. So that dark turn came from nowhere. Oh! Mmm! Is this foreshadowing by any chance? Because I swear. <laughs> what was I just saying about my friends warning me? <laughs> yeah, I knew it's going to have something to do with you like big time. Mary gently giggles all of a sudden. The literature... The Literature Club is secretly a massacre club. It's like Yonder Simulator, but a club for killers rather than a club for the cooking. Ah, oh, damn. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Candy? I'm really glad I didn't name it Candy Girl, because that's, 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 that's one synonym I, I, I use for stuff. And if I had named it Candy Girl, that would have been really awkward. Because... My character, the boy. I don't know. No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so too, because, dude, this is gonna become your life. I bet you. <laughs> yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri's into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals, or their own philosophy that they believe in. I wonder. Then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out of the naive one. Wait. They're made out to be the naive one for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. It's not like you're giving me foreshadowing events to how my life is going to fall apart. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. Oh, my voice just squeaked a little there. Ooh. That felt weird. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talk stop me if I start talking too much. Okay, stop. There. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Huh. That's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? Yeah, you don't have to. Huh. What are you saying? Just a moment ago you said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book quickly retrieve the book that I had put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. I think we're distracting her, dude. <laughs> All right. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I can read. I will agree to that. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's been reading from my book instead. S sorry I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I... I do. I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> yeah, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's and hold my book more between the two of them. Uh... Uh... <laughs> I suppose so. Yuri timid again. Tip, tip, tip. Well, this is her own copy. Once we each, once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders al are almost touching. 
This is like Natsuki. Cheating on me. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so I instead use my right to hold the book open. Oh, I guess that makes it difficult to turn the page. Here. Oh, damn! She cute. She cute. I like her more than Natsuki. Even though Natsuki can cook. <laughs> Which is a big factor in my life. <laughs> Alright. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Uh... I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, or huddled even closer together than before, <laughs> it's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face. And she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? To turn the page. Oh, she's looking at us! <laughs> Please don't look at me like that. You're actually pretty cute. Still think something's up with the ears. I don't know. They just don't seem like they're in the right place. I'm, I'm learning how to draw, so I, I'm, I'm trying to pay more attention to the other art styles and stuff. Anyway. Ah, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. Oh, yes, admit that. That's great. I glance over at her face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Uh, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. Oh, now she's smiling and looking at us. Crap! So are we gonna have a reading experience with each of the girls? Damn. They're all this cute. I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. She no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that, she's finishes the, that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but... The main character kind of reminds me of you. A little bit. You, you think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. But she also second guesses all of the things that she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything. But they're kind of reminiscent of some of your ma 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 mannerisms. I was gonna say mainstream, but I don't think that's the right word. <laughs> I, I see. Aw, oh, man. Damn. Okay. You remain silent for a moment. The candy, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. But wait, I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were self-conscious about that sort of thing. I guess the moment that it's kind of cute. Uh, uh. <laughs> what are you saying all of a sudden? I... Oh, fuck you! <laughs> You're gonna die first because of that interruption. Okay, everyone. <laughs> I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Oh. <laughs> Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Ah, it's not. I'm. F it's fine. 
Gary releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Um, ow! <laughs> Alright, I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. <coughs> Damn. Okay. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then flip it back into my bag. It's called a bookmark! Uh... This shit again. I'm just gonna get comfortable here. In my squeaky chair. Alright. You know what? We've just been spending a lot of time with Yuri, so let's do her first. Yeah, I'm not gonna say this. I'm not ready for this. I'm so suspicious. <laughs> Okay. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. I wish I could read my own poem. Like, what does it say? <laughs> Do you like it? Candy. How did you pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques we was practicing. Maybe that's why you did a good job explaining. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. Okay, never mind. I really wanted to give it try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. Surprise, surprise. I'm the killer. I don't know why I'm assuming death is in this, but it said not suitable for children and if you have depression and anxiety, don't do it, so... I guess my first thought went to death, but... Maybe I shouldn't be so prejudiced. Why am I getting text messages? Shut up! That was my mom. Whoops. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know! It's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. And that is the good thing to do. As a psychology major, I can say that it's a good thing to do. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. Aw. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me... What? <laughs> Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? She doesn't have any friends, my dude. Yuri doesn't respond to that. I wonder why. I wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Do you? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I do. If it's with you. Oh, man. <clears throat> Hold on. <clears throat> Alright. I'm ready to go. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night, while I was slicing bread for a guilty- It happened in the dead of night, while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an in unordinary, unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. 
well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom, the bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its place, its phase, the moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. Oh shit. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Pavlonian conditioning. I was just thinking that! <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking that. Yeah. This is definitely Pavlov. Um, I slice the bread again. And I feed myself again. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. She eat the raccoon. <laughs> I should really close read these, but that's it. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and convey emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to, to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. Like eating? <laughs> it's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? B because they're embarrassing, and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Candy? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other in our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. Alright. We're gonna do the rest of them next time. Cause I need a cough drop. <clears throat> so thank you for watching. Tune in next time. Bye bye!